Hello everyone and welcome to another Friday Business Intelligence Tip of the Week. Today we're going to be continuing our series on Power BI and we're going to go through the next uh, type of data connection that you can connect to. So this data connection is how to connect Power BI to SQL Server database. Last week we covered connecting it to CSV files where I went through a couple of examples of connecting two CSV files uh, together uh, with the data and analyzing it at a high level in Power BI. Today we're going to be talking about specifically connecting to an on-premise SQL Server database. Now, um, like all things in Power BI, there are many ways to do that. And we're going to cover just the most basic way where I'm going to be using the Power BI desktop to connect to a SQL Server that happens to be on my laptop, but it could be anywhere on your network. So that's the scenario we're going to go through today. So I'm going to start out with by jumping over to my other screen where I have Power BI Desktop started. Now, I went through last week's CSV files, but if I go ahead and I select, I want to get data. Um, there's a few ways to do that, but if I come up here to the menu at the top and select SQL Server, you'll notice all the various data types that you can uh, select from here in the list. I'm just going to pick SQL Server uh, database from the list and I'm going to select connect. Now what it's going to do is it's going to ask for the server that you're connecting to. So in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and connect to my laptop. If you know the database, uh, you can put that in here. And I actually recommend if you do know the database to go ahead and put that in there. Or if you know that the data is all coming from one of the databases, put that in there. Um, in my case, uh, I'm just going to leave that blank. Now there are two modes of connecting to data in SQL Server. One is to import the data and the other is direct query. Now you're gonna see this option with many different data sources in Power BI and it's important to understand at least at a high level what's happening in each one of these so you make the choice. Uh, depending on the type of data you have, you'll choose one or the other. Now the difference between them is import does exactly what it says. It's going to allow me to pick the data that I want and import that into Power BI. The advantage of that is it gives you the full power of Power BI to do all the different functions and everything because the data literally is being copied into the Power BI uh, engine. Uh, if I select direct query, the data stays where it is and Power BI just queries out to get that data. Now, there are some different limitations each way, but just know that the difference is somewhat going to depend on the type of data. If you have a lot of data, you probably want to leave it where it is. If you, uh, because Power BI, without going to premium, has a one gigabyte uh, limit. And we covered the difference between Power BI Premium and Power BI Pro and, and regular Power BI uh, subscriptions in a previous topic. So you might want to go back to that uh, and review that. But generally, if your data is under a gigabyte or if you have a premium subscription and you have a, a manageable set of data, you'll do import. Now, if you do import, you also need to periodically schedule the uh, importing of that data so that you keep it fresh. If you're just doing it one time or once a month, something like that, import works great. If you need it very frequently updated, then you're right on the edge of needing direct query or import. Now, the advantage of importing is the data is going to be available for the users very quickly because it's already in Power BI. If you do direct query, every request you make, whether it be from a slicer or from another filter of some kind has to make a round trip request back to your database to ask for that. So the user experience from an end user perspective will be a little bit slower uh, between uh, items because for each item, it's going to have to go back and query. So you have the trade off of always having live or fresh data uh, by direct query for the penalty of a little bit of a delay from a user perspective. Um, I'm going to pick import in this case uh, for what we're doing today. It's not really going to matter. Um, but if you, when you go to actually uh, implement this, you'll definitely want to have a good understanding of do you want to import or direct query. Most basic things to start are import. Now I'm going to open up advanced options and just to explain some of the things that you could do on this. Um, if you have a fairly large 
data set or a slower server, there is an option for the command timeout that you could expand upon this uh, if the default's not okay. I wanna say it's one minute is the default. I could be wrong on that. Uh, it might be 30 seconds. It's either 30 seconds or one minute, but you'll just, um, if you have a really large data set, you might want to expand the, the timeout on that. If instead of a single table you want to access, if you know a SQL statement you want to execute, you could put that in here. And as it says uh, on the label, if you do put in a SQL statement, you have to put in the database name so it knows where to execute that. Uh, SQL statement. For my example, I'm going to say import, leave the database blank in the SQL. So you'll see what that looks like. And then a few other uh, options down below here um, aren't used too often. Basically, the, the relationship columns does what it, it says that it's going to include any automatically related items uh, versus the navigate using full hierarchy. What that does is, if you're familiar with SQL Server, uh, when you publish tables or views or things like that into a SQL database, they get tied to schemas. Um, by keeping this unchecked, it's just going to list all items together. So let's say you had a schema that was, um, you know, finance, and the table underneath there was company. The, the table would show up as finance at company. Uh, if you had another one that was human resources and it was company, it would be human resources dot company. What this navigate using full hierarchy um, will do, if I check that, is it will create folders for each schema. So you'd see a folder for finance and a folder for HR, and then you'd have to click on finance and go down to see company. By leaving it unchecked, you're going to see it just all as one big list. I'm just going to leave it all as uh, unchecked uh, within that and just say okay. Now, when I say OK, it's going to try and connect up to that server, uh, RB Surface Book 2. And it's going to um, prompt me here in a minute. So what it did, because I had previously connected, it did not ask me for a user or password or anything that way. Um, if you uh, haven't connected, you would have get, gotten prompted there uh, to either use Windows Authentication, your current user, or override that with a different user. So maybe you have specific SQL users and passwords that you want to use, maybe a reporting user or something like that. Uh, so it would have prompted you. Now me, I've saved that already uh, as mine. Actually, what I'll do is I'll hit cancel so you can see what that looks like. If you want to reset that, um, and this is a common question, uh, it gets confusing because all of a sudden it just connects and there's nothing there. If you go under file, options and settings, there's a data source settings. If I go in here, it's going to list the ones that I connected to last time. And I can say, I want to go ahead and clear clear that. It's going to warn me, are you sure? And I'll say, yep. So I'll remove that. So now when I go to, I'll, I'll do another SQL uh, server connection. Last time I did get data. This time I'll go to the quick link to SQL server. And it'll look just the same way. Or I'll put in RB Surface Book 2. And I'll do import. And remember, I didn't change under anything under advance. So I'll just say, OK, now what it's going to do is bring up that prompt that you probably will get for the very first time. You want to use Windows um, or an alternate credentials. You want to override the database and so forth. I'm just going to use my current credentials, which is my Windows, like what I did before. But if you had SQL user, you could say alternate and put that in. So I'm going to go ahead and say connect. And it's going to say that because of the way that I've set things up, it's not going to automatically uh, use an encrypted connection, which in my case, I'm going to say, OK, that's fine. I understand that. So now it's going to show my various databases. Because I didn't specify a database, it's going to show them all that I have access to uh, in my system. I'm going to go to a financials development database that I have. And um, you'll see it lists all the views and tables and everything that I have access to. Um, whatever you want to bring in, you just go ahead and select the tables that you want. I'll pick my company table. You see, it's just a list of companies that I have in that database. And then I'm going to pick another table called Law GLM Names, um, which is a listing of departments or cost centers. And so if you're from familiar with financial data at all. This happens to be a Lawson, which is now an in database. 
that we have dashboard gear uh, integrate with. Um, but basically, we're going to have company and GL names as the cost centers. And I'm going to go ahead and load that in. Remember, I picked import. So what that's doing now is it's going to go out, get my company table, get my law GL names table, and bring that in uh, together. Now, these two tables have a uh, tie naturally, uh, but some of your tables might not. So when this is done here, you're going to see the tables listed over here to the right companies and GL names. So in Power BI, just like what we did with the CSV files, all the data shows on the right, you then can use it in the visuals. When you're doing SQL data, what you'll want to do is after you bring that in, the very first thing is go to the modeling section and say manage relationships. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna show the various tables that you brought in and, should, and allow you to create a relationship between them. You'll want to make sure that everything has a relationship in the model so that when you pick something, it knows how to filter out another item and so forth. In my case, it's a very straightforward, predefined relationship that GL Names has a field called company and the companies has a field called company and that's the relationship between them. But if you do need to do uh, additional ones, you can select new here and manually make that link between them. So now what I'm gonna do is to use one of these fields, if I wanna see what that table looks like, you'll see the list of the fields over here. So maybe I wanna do something like, I'll add a slicer and I'll put the company full name in that slicer. So what that's gonna do is come over here and list out all my companies. Now, if I wanna use um, the department list here, maybe I wanna do a report on that or a table, um, I'm gonna switch, actually I wanna switch that back to slicer. Then I'm gonna come over here and click outside of it and do a table. And I'll put that down below here. And I'll list out all of my different departments that I have in that, which would be, I wanna see maybe the individual uh, account unit, which is like the department or cost center. And I wanna see the description of it. Now, right now, I don't have anything selected up here, so it's showing everything. But you'll see if I pick an individual company, it's automatically making that link between the companies and the cost centers. Because of that relationship that was there, it automatically is going to allow the various components to connect to each other and do the filtering between that. So... To connect SQL Server, that's as simple as that. Now, I'm going off of a local desktop to a local SQL Server. If I were going to put this out uh, to the cloud, so just like we talked about before, you take the Power BI uh, application and publish that out to the Power BI service uh, out on the cloud, what we would need to do to connect to our local desktop is install what's called a gateway connector. And that's gonna allow the connection from the Power BI cloud service to the on-premise uh, SQL server. We will cover that in a future session, but just know that when you're in the desktop, you have full access to everything on your network from SQL, just like you would using other tools um, in, on your system. So you would connect that way. But when we do go to publish this, just know that if you do want it to connect back to your on-premise, or local SQL Server, you have to install another component called a gateway, which we will cover in a future session. So today that's as far as I wanna take it. Now, when we get to other pieces of connecting to data, we're gonna get further into the modeling of that data, which is defining more advanced relationships, talking about adding fields into your data that don't exist necessarily in your tables. And we do that through what's called DAX, which is a, a uh, formula language that's part of uh, an expression language, I should say, that's part of the Power BI environment. And that's how you define custom fields and calculations and so forth. So in a future session, we'll go over that. How do you add things into your data set that don't necessarily exist in the data? So hopefully you see today that to connect to SQL is a very straightforward, easy process. And in my opinion, the way to go rather than CSV files, I understand CSV and Excel is you have to do sometimes, but uh, if you do have the ability to connect to the database and do it that way, it's a lot less moving parts and a lot more enterprise data. So thanks for joining today and um, look forward to sharing with you another business intelligence tip next week. Thank you.